I've been wanting to see one of these for uh, ages. It's the new uh, Skywatch 150D Pro. So that's the uh, the new one that's come out that's similar to the 80 and the 120 millimeter Pro uh, Equinoxes. But in order to get the same quality, there's a, s a standard price you've got to pay. Apart from the 1,600 quid price tag, we've got this problem. <laughs> Don't know how heavy it is. But it's a bit of a gym workout, and I don't think it's going to quite fit on the top of an EQ5 mount. So I think something a bit bigger is going to be required. The other thing, I can't quite see myself popping that in the back of the car to bring along to Rosaston Astronomy Group's monthly meetings if we've got a clear sky, or possibly just carrying it to a dark sky site. So it's a bit of an observatory class instrument. I think the old uh, Skywatcher 8 inch here is more likely to do the business as far as that's concerned. Apart from that, an optical vision, we've still got a fair number of the standard scopes that we've got. The, the old flex tube is, uh, is still doing the rounds, although interestingly, that doesn't seem to be mentioned very much in the magazines anymore. It's still going to put you back 1,400 quid though to try and get a 12 inch on that, but you have got the advantage it has got some form of push to go to on it, so I'm not quite sure how effective the uh, mounts are in terms of buying as far as that's concerned. More beefy mounts available and a range of other scopes as we already know. Yeah, any kind of hardbacks, that's, that's not something that's spread that Amazon today. I think so. Hello, good morning. Hello, I'm with uh, Al here from Aston Scientific, and I was walking around Astrofest and I came across this rather interesting device. Um, tell us a little bit about it, Al. Well, this is the Rotarian. This device was originally designed for viewing applications. So it's basically um, an electromechanical uh, remote uh, turret for four optics. But then um, we decided later to add the accessory for the imaging, which is a tripod that you can install on top of it. Yes, and the camera will go in here, your filter wheel, any kind of camera. The neat thing about it is that we decided to, instead of putting eyepieces, to put a specific, you know, optics for imaging. So for Smith Cassegrains, they tell us this is probably the best reducer in the market, made by Starizona. Yes. So that makes a two meter and so telescope like a C8 into a 1.3 meter telescope, I believe. The second position, with just one click, you would change into the prime focus kit and you could see through it there is nothing there so you can do also DSO with it but if you go on to the third port then we put a times 2.5 power made from Teleview so you have a 5 meter telescope for planetary and if you change that to the fourth position we have a times 5 therefore you would have a 10 meter telescope so this is the first system to make your smith cassegrain the universal telescope you can do dso and you can do planetary imaging with the same scope with just one simple click so just to uh, summarize it's a remotely controlled device which allows you various setups. So we've got one option here where it's been set up with a choice of cameras. Yeah, that is, um, oh, let me show you a final feature. Yes, for. indeed, yeah, sure. Every time the optics move, yes, they will search for the optical axis of the telescope. Yep. Once it has been reached, the automatic shutter will pop 
in and out, yeah, in. All right. So it will seal the gap between your optics oh, wow. and your camera, so there will be no outside light entry. So, so, so even if you do it, your accessories of different sizes, yes. Oh, that's very clever. They're, you know, and it can be height adjusted individually, and obviously the tilt through this handmade this uh, nuts ISO standard, you can adjust the tilt on your camera. Okay. Yes. Well, at Rosston Astronomy Group, we've just literally built ourselves an observatory at the moment, and I could quite imagine this device sitting in our observatory with our new telescope. It is very convenient indeed. Now, if you're going to the next level, I'd say science, and you want to do photometry, spectrography, and so on, then you want to use this accessory. We call it the Rotarian Cam. Mm -hmm. Yes, and you can, with this system, you can put multiple devices on the Rotarian. You will remove the optics, yep. yes, and you can do multiple devices. Or, or, you could maybe decide to have one port with a reducer and one camera, yep. and another port with a Barlow and a secondary camera. Now you have a refractor that is universal for planetary and DSO. And this system will be presented in New York in April. Fantastic. And if we wanted to buy one of these for our observatory, how much would this set us back? Well, you have to ask Dr. Simon <laughs> from the White Speed Center. <laughs> All right, okay. okay. And they'll tell you. They will tell you. <laughs> okay, thank okay. you very much indeed. Really. Thank you. I'm here with uh, Jan here from the Society of Popular Astronomy. Hi Jan, thanks Hi. for Good morning. to speak to me. And he's going to, I noticed as I came past, these incredible models where you could actually build a working telescope. It looks like it's made of card. Well it is. You start off with one of these kits here, which has the whole uh, caboodle in cardboard cut out, press out, and instructions. It's worth saying these kits are less than £30 each. Yes and the various kits made in Germany. And this is one which I've made at home myself. I, I've got very little practical skills, but even I managed to make it. It's a scale model of Galileo's original telescope, and the optics are scaled to what Galileo used. And it's quite amazing because when you look at it through it, the field of view is absolutely tiny. So how he managed to make all his uh, observations through such a telescope is truly amazing. It's got a, uh, I can't remember, concave, con objective lens, it's not Kepler, it's a, it's a concave one, which makes the field of view tiny, and you focus it like in and out, but everything is actually scaled to Galileo's original telescope, yes. and that is, you know, it's, it's quite interest, interesting to make, it makes you think, well, you know, what wonderful observer he was, how he saw the, uh, uh, moons going round uh, Saturn is amazing. That's what he thought, wasn't it? He saw the moons going right. well, Saturn. Well, right, and Jupiter. And Jupiter, yes. Yeah. yeah, Jupiter. And he saw on he saw the rings, not as rings, as ears, didn't he? That's right, yeah. yes. Yeah. How he, and he saw sunspots. Gosh, what happened to his eyes? You know? Absolutely. And that, uh, that's really good. Uh, it's really, really interesting. This is a um, scaled model of a simple... Newtonian telescope. Yeah, Newtonian yes. telescope. That's right. I haven't actually made this one. No. But I have made this. The uh, yeah, armillary uh, type sphere. That was fun to make. Fantastic. That was. I've been wanting to see one of these for uh, ages. It's the new uh, Skywatch 150D Pro. So that's the uh, the new one that's come out that's similar to the 80 and the 120 millimeter Pro uh, Equinoxes. But in order to get the same quality, there's a, a standard price you've got to pay. Apart from the 1,600 quid price tag, we've got this problem. <laughs> It is. But it's a bit of a gym workout, and I don't think it's going to quite fit on the top of an EQ5 mount, so I think something a bit bigger is going to be required. The other thing, I can't quite see myself popping that in the back of the car to bring along to Rosaston Astronomy Group's monthly meetings if we've got a clear sky, or possibly just carrying it to a dark sky site, so it's a bit of an observatory class instrument. I think the old uh, Skywatcher 8-inch here is more likely to do the business, as far as that's concerned. Thank <laughs> you.
apart from that, an optical vision, we've still got a fair number of the standard scopes that we've got. The, the old flex tube is, uh, is still doing the rounds, although interestingly, that doesn't seem to be mentioned very much in the magazines anymore. Still going to put you back 1,400 quid though to try and get a 12 inch on that, but you have got the advantage that it has got some form of push to go to on it, so I'm not quite sure how effective the uh, mounts are in terms of buying as far as that's concerned. More beefy mounts available and a range of other scopes as we already know. We ha what we have here is the famous Omega Mini Track 2. It's a smart, cheap, and uh, lightweight device that allows you to make very pretty uh, pictures of big objects or wide-angle uh, images of the night sky. Um, setting up is quite straightforward. All you need is a little tripod like this with a ball head on top. You take your mini track, put it on the ball head, then you align it to the pole here, and then you put in top another ball head in the camera. And uh, then it, it's depending on the uh, focal length of the objective lens that you're using, you can do uh, night sky objects. The best or longest focal length that have been used successfully are about 300 millimeter telephoto lenses. You of course have to stack the images, but it works. It doesn't need any batteries. It doesn't need any extra stuff. Just another ball head and the camera on top. Maximum load is about two kilograms for the camera and objective lens. Um, for heavy stuff, you can adjust the tension here so that it doesn't slip. This is pretty straightforward. You have about 60 minutes of time and then when your time is over, it will wake you up and remind you to wind up again. Um, this is a project that we have been uh, making together with an amateur industry. It's not our invention. There was an old Purus Urwerks Montierung a long time ago, and uh, an Italian astronomer, Christian Fantinazzi, took this into the 21st century and made those uh, custom made for customers for many years. Then he came to us and asked, What about a serial production? And that's just what we did. This is an um, equatorial mount from iOptron, the CEM60, the central equatorial mount. Um, it has some, some differences to other mounts. The main thing is that uh, the counterweight is offset, the counterweight rod is offset in this direction. So, uh, so, so, so we've got the axis that comes down through here. Yes. Where my finger is, axis there. And if I've got here, the actual counterweight axis is offset. Like that. Yep. And this cannot, uh, it, it's, it's, it's more unlikely uh, for the counterweight to uh, touch the, the legs of the tripod. This is uh, uh, one main advantage. Um, it's a heavy mount which can carry up to uh, 25 kilograms. But the um, uh, mount head alone is very light at about 8. Really? Yes, it's so actually pretty easy to break down and carry outside. Yes, it's, 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 it's really light compared to, to, its, uh, um, uh, to its performance. It's really a uh, um, light mount. So this bit, the central head telescope, this is only about 8 kilo kilograms, you say? Yes, the, the head only. Yeah. From here to here, including the... Yes. Uh, uh, um, uh, uh, block. Is a rail right. okay. uh, That's incredible. Absolutely incredible. Yeah. It's a beautiful piece of kit. Yes, it's really nice. It's made in USA, this uh, mount. And it has logical go-to system. 
It's on your website. And um, it can be ordered with additional encoders on the axis. It's uh, more expensive. But with the encoders on the axis, you don't need auto guiding any longer. If you polar align the mount very good, you can uh, use it without auto guiding when you have the mount including the encoders on the axis. But this has no encoders, this, this piece here. Well, thank you very much indeed. A bit less your velocity at the moment. Okay, keep going a bit forward. And we're trying to get to okay. 1.5. Yeah. 0.15. 0.15. You can just get up a little bit at the moment. Okay, while you're doing that, then tr just leave the velocity for the moment and try and keep it in the. Yeah, that's it. And remember, in space, in space, uh, when you start moving in a particular direction, yeah, you keep going in that direction until you counter it. There you go, good, moving good. You can up the speed a bit now if you increase your forward momentum. Okay. Okay. Just a touch more forward. And again. Okay, that's fine. Down, down. Oh. Okay, just small burst. Let it slide into view and then counter it when you need to. Looking good. Your distance is now 16 meters. Looking good. 14 meters. Approach speed is 0.14 at the moment, but that should still engage. 12 meters. <laughs> Looking good. Good morning. <laughs> 10 meters. Lining up quite nicely. The important thing is not to panic at the last minute because it seems like it's getting too close and then 9 meters. Still looking good, 8 meters. Slight touch to the right, that's it. Very good. And down a touch. Counter. Very good. 6 meters. You need to increase forward velocity. You're at 0.12, you need 0.15 ideally. Okay, 0.14, that's fine. Just keep it centered as much as possible. Four meters. Very good, that's looking good. Very good. Two meters, three meters. Okay, that's good. We can leave it at times if it fits. Two meters. One meter, should be there. One second. Well done. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> I got rid of the demon from last year.